Today I'm going to talk about the four Ps, and my topic is that it's not dead. And I got some a bit of proof um, uh, in my PhD that I actually just finished this week. So, thank you. So, how many of you in here are mums or dads? Hands up. How many of you have trouble feeding your kids fruit and vegetables? Quite a few. Maybe half of that who raised their hands. I'm going to show an example here um, quickly, which is uh, after we had done our intervention um, day and um, the kids had already left school, but then we found, them, um, we found them in the hallway and they were lining up to get to the room that we were in. And um, we asked, like, what are you doing? And they're like, have you got any leftovers? And this is what happened. Kids. There was a little boy putting celery in his backpack for the home run. <laughs> Secondly, I want to talk to you about Finnish context. There's only three Finnish people or one half Finnish people in here, Timo. <laughs> um, you need to know the context that we're in. You know, um, I was just outside eating lunch and it was, what is it, 35 degrees? And I just left Finland last Friday and it was about five degrees and it's, uh, it's not going up, it's going down. So you need to understand um, that fruit and vegetables are not in our daily diet and it's because Finland looks like this. We have Black Friday every Friday from October till March and it's because we are living in the Northern Hemisphere next to the Arctic Circle and it's dark all day, every day. Um, the ALS Ice Challenge, Bucket Challenge is an everyday for us. <laughs> so you feel like having an apple in that? No. This is what we do for fun. <laughs> we got more advanced tools than small talk. We don't like that. And uh, this is what Finland looks like most probably at the moment. So someone having a coffee next to the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, the context when it comes to fruit and veg, we have to remember that Australia has had fruit all day, every day for thousands of years. Um, we were limited to not have fruit and vegetables. Um, we only had the vegetables that we... Uh, actually grew in Finland all the way up to 1950s and that was because of the World War II and we had limitations. We couldn't actually bring them in. There were customs and we were not allowed to bring them in. Um, the first oranges were sold black market until 1945. So if you're rich, if you're a friend of a king or a president or someone, you could get oranges. And, and then the last one is my dad was telling me that when he was working in the docks in 1960s, he actually used to trade vodka for bananas. So when the first banana ships came in, he would have a bottle of vodka and trade it to a, a pack of bananas. So you've got to remember that we haven't had them for no more than, you know, 65 years or a little bit more. Then just a fact, our kids eat less fruit than any other nation in Europe. We don't know why, but it could be because of those reasons. Climate is different. We haven't had them for long. And um, obviously our food culture is a very different one compared to here. It's very fatty, very fatty, very big meals, lots of potato, lots of potato. Then we get to the main topic, which is the four Ps. Um, product, price, place, promotion. Um, obviously it was discussed a little bit more before this guy, Mr. McCarthy in 1960, but he's, he's been said that he's the forefather. Very simple model. But, you know, he wasn't alone. All these people wanted to have their own say. All of them wanted to critique and have their own say and put a, a couple of more P's in it. When I started my PhD, I started to look at the P's and these are all the P's that I found. I had to get a dictionary out because I was like, what are these words? Did they actually just start making models and find what starts with the letter P? Let's put that in the model. But it didn't stop there. We got C's, we got D's, S's, A's. I couldn't fit the V's and W's in here, but they're there too. So all of these people started their papers with four P's is not good. Here's my alternative. So there we go. We're not alone because in social marketing, we have the same thing too. We have had our criticisms, but there they are. 
They're mostly about the fact that we shouldn't put um, commercial marketing into social marketing. It doesn't work. And it is, it is a little bit difficult when you think about it. And if you read the papers, it becomes very difficult. So we have a couple of issues here. We know, and it's been said yesterday, and it's been said today, we are a promotion-dominated approach in this field. That's all we're doing. We're putting posters up, and then we're saying, that's good, awesome, we're done with social marketing. And we got science to prove that. We have literature reviews, not one, not two, but four, saying that this is happening. 80 to 90% of the programs are using only promotion and not using all of the four Ps. This is from a Finnish context. This is what Finnish government thinks that mums should do. So they publish food guidelines uh, for the mothers. This is 128 pages of motivation. Um, <laughs> It says, let's eat together. It doesn't have a single recipe in it, but it has lots of nutritional information. And I'm just thinking, how is a mum going to take this out and go like, all right, let's have a healthy meal? No way. Secondly, we have all these fantastic models, P's, D's, A's, S's, V's, W's. None of them have been tested for effectiveness. So we've always just made a new model and said, there it is. Do we have any empirical evidence that it works? No. We would just put it out there. So it hasn't been never tested for effectiveness, and therefore the debate around 4Ps and whether it's useful or whether it's not useful is a little bit unconstructive and confusing until we have made some uh, testing. And that really set me on the journey uh, of these four years. So I made the study. We wanted to test what if there was a campaign that used all the 4Ps and we wanted to change children's fruit and vegetable eating behavior what if that was more effective than a 1P campaign? And we did it in the Finnish primary schools, and it was called Five Day. Um, these are better paper in Finnish, if you want to know how it's, how it's said. And it says in here, remember to eat your three uh, vegetables, through two fruit, fruits per day. So we needed a product, and we used a commercial marketing mix from McCarthy. So we literally just had products and services in their simplest forms. And um, we had a cooking class. 22 and a half minutes, a tasting class, 22 and a half minutes, and we had a uh, branded fruit in the local supermarket, which was awesome. Here are some pictures from um, when we're setting up the <laughs> tasting class, <laughs> and Sharon's having a good, good smile there. <laughs> 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 and so am I, if you look at me. <laughs> and here we got some kids. Um, the kids are tasting here, I think that's basil, and then we had some capsicum and pineapple, and I think these are second graders, they're quite cute. Um, and then you can see something from the cooking class. Do you know what these are? They're crocodiles, of course. Of course they are. But they made monsters, space stations, zoos, anything in between. It's a little bit scary to look at them when they're using the knife, but yeah, nothing too bad happened. And we also, also wanted to um, look at the price. So obviously we offered this for free because the Finnish school is free anyway. And if I said there was a price, the parents would have killed me. Um, and then we, we gave out discount vouchers for parents so that when we gave them recipes and they would have fruit that they needed to buy for that, they would get a discount off that fruit and then we'd go to the supermarket and they would have a look at the branded fruit and make a purchase. Here we have, on the up left corner, we have the 10% discount off the uh, fruit. And below that, we have a recipe. And on the right side, we have a fruit and vegetable passport. So kids would actually use this in school and they would mark how many fruit and vegetables they've had a day and whether they had completed the recipes at home and so on. Here are some pictures of the uh, vegetables that we sold in the supermarket. They had some stickers on them. And the place for the first product was the school and the place for the uh, fruit and vegetables was the local supermarket. The promotion we used, um, you saw the passport, the passport was part of a game so you would get points from eating the right stuff and you would move around uh, the map of Europe and go to different cities and learn new things about that city. So that was called the world's most uh, delicious adventure. We had posters on school walls, we had inf information on campaign website, we used social media, we used materials for teachers. So that was the 4P campaign and here's again the fantastic poster. Uh, that we had next to all the other fantastic posters that are in schools. Not too fantastic. Um, then we had the one, one piece setting. Um, so we replaced the cooking and the tasting class with just an information session. And what I found out, 
And this is, I think, this is crucial in social marketing. When you go out, you actually learn what the kids think. You might read a thousand papers on what the kids think, but then you go there and you realize you have had no idea. So what I learned was they already knew everything. They knew that avocado is good. They knew that bananas are good. They knew everything about oranges. They even knew what vitamins are in each fruit. Do they eat it? No. Nah. Um, then we use the same posters and school walls, materials for teachers, social media. And this was uh, the method. So we had five four-piece schools, five one-piece schools. We used to have one, uh, five control schools as well, but two dropped out. And we used a little bit of a, a survey for kids so they could actually draw and then write. The ones who could write, they could write what they had eaten in the morning and we did that pre and post. And here are the results. So we measured breakfast, dinner, and then we combined the two. At breakfast, we can see there's a significant increase in the four-peer schools, 1P in control, no change. At dinner, there was an increase with all of these, but it wasn't any significant. And then when we combined them, we had, again, a significant increase in the four-peer schools, but all the other ones, not significant. So what does this mean? It's the first empirical study to test the effectiveness of the four Ps. So it's a good stepping stone to move forward and start doing more of this testing. And we could say that you should start using the four Ps if you have the chance to do that. This was the first test and we already got a second one lined up with Sharon, which is very exciting and that's gonna be in illegal dumping and recycling. Um, that's all I got, thank you. I'm actually well ahead of time, thank you.